Hi everyone, my name is Nate. I am the uh, support engineer at Voltage and I'm gonna answer a question that I get a lot. For those that don't know, I have been uh, tinkering around and running lightning nodes since 2018. Uh, the general purpose of that is mostly for education and uh, passion. I love the idea of having a global decentralized way to make payments instantly uh, between peers. But there is a component to Lightning, especially running a Lightning node, that a lot of people have caught wind of, which is that you can um, route other people's payments. Meaning if someone has a channel, uh, rather if someone wishes to pay someone else but doesn't have a channel open to the, the person they want to pay, they can route their payment through somebody who does have a channel open to that destination or, or a destination to another destination. And the payment can sort of hop along the network uh, through various node channels to the final destination. And your node can do that for other people's payments also. And you as the node runner get to decide if you want to sort of uh, scoop a little bit off the top before forwarding the payment along the route. And this is a fee setting that anyone running a node, a public node, can, can send. Uh, they can set the fee rates to be a base fee, meaning no matter how much Satoshis are being passed along, you can uh, scoop up a flat amount, say 10 Satoshis, 50 Satoshis, you can set what you like. You can also set a percentage. So you can say, I want to take 0.1% of every payment that goes through my node. Now uh, on a basic level that sounds awesome but there's a few actually there's there's quite a few little nuances but some of the big ones are um those that say wow cool i want to start a routing node okay great one of the things you need to determine before you dive in with that as your goal is um how much capital are you willing to allocate towards these channels right uh some some lightning payments people send big lightning payments and if your channel can't handle the size of these payments that some people are sending then you're not going to get the route so and you're not going to get paid so folks that are that that have large channels will likely route payments more than you also what you also have to figure is is the routes that are your you that you are making through your channels are they going to actually be used meaning um when someone makes a payment the they can def if you make a payment on lightning you can define the route if you wish to um but if you let the network figure it out it's going to go through sort of an algorithm that determines you know what's the most likely and cheapest path to do so um, when you set up a routing node, you're going to need to experiment and find pathways that are not being used yet between nodes. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes I see is people just open up channels to the biggest nodes on the network, meaning the nodes on the network have the most channels. Say uh, there's a node with 700 channels and you think, wow, cool, if I open up a channel with them, I'll be able to route to 700 other nodes. Um, technically true if, if you want to make a payment, but if you're routing someone else's payment, those 700 channels are also your competition. So it's good to have a diverse set of routing channels, meaning you might want to have a few channels to some of the biggest nodes on the network. You might want to have a few channels to some higher quality nodes that aren't so big and, uh, and sort of see which, which channels sort of flow around. Now, to get back to the profitability thing, um, there, just like any business, there are also expenses. So if you are opening and closing channels, you are paying on-chain transaction fees. If you are manually rebalancing your channels, meaning that you have a channel heavy in local liquidity, 
and you also have a channel heavy in remote liquidity, you can sort of pay yourself. The thing is though, when you pay yourself, you are essentially paying other people to forward your payment back to you. So that's an expense. So you have to sort of figure out, um, will the fee that I collect from my channel that is going from the outbound or local side to the inbound or remote side, if that completely drains, am I making a profit? So these are things that you should keep in mind. Um, fees aren't the only way to earn sats on the Lightning Network. There are ways for nodes that are established, high quality nodes, to charge a premium to have, uh, to, to essentially give inbound liquidity to another node. Um, for example, Lightning Labs has a product called Pool, which is a blind auction service where folks that need inbound liquidity, which means that they need channels to them so they could receive payments, um, they're willing to pay a premium for that. And then folks who have some capital left over and they do want to open up channels, but they only want to open up channels to folks who will pay them for it. So there's sort of a blind auction where you could go either way, a bid or an ask. Again, it's called Lightning Pool. Um, and you get matched up and you get paid a basis points for a time frame, two weeks, two months. There's a few different choices now on that. So that could be an option of earning sats on Lightning or earning a yield on Lightning if you have the capital for it. Um, Blockstream also has, if you're using C Lightning rather than LND, uh, has a uh, similar concept, but it doesn't use a centralized matching server. It's called um, liquidity ads. So that might be something you can also look into. And right now those are pretty much the only ways to go about it. There are some great educational materials out there. You can look at Plebnet, for example, which, uh, which has a great wiki. You can also look at the Voltage blog. I've written a few guides myself. And essentially just sort of um, start getting involved with the community on Telegram, Plebnet communities, Twitter. Uh, you know, if you reach out hashtag lightning network and tweet at voltage or something, we can point you in the right direction. And then there's also the possibility of making a profit that does not yet exist. Um, there has been some interesting theory crafting in the community about how nodes that are established early and are high quality might themselves be assets in the future, the node themselves, meaning that high net worth individuals or institutions someday, if Lightning Network really takes off in the world, they might be willing to pay you to, for example, put their name as your alias or, or, or something like that. Um, really this, you know, it, it's, it's fun to think about different ways we can monetize our nodes in the future. But I think that, um, as in 2022, now the way that lightning is growing, we've got lightning businesses popping up, really cool projects, really cool ideas coming down the pike. I think it's important if you're interested in running a lightning node to do it. Uh, the educational aspect of it is extremely, uh, has, has a very high chance of, of being able to be capitalized on someday. This is going to be a limited, there's going to be a limited amount of people that know the knowledge of how to run a lightning node. And I think that there will be more and more people looking for education, looking for, uh, management, that sort of thing. So. Uh, it might be profitable in a sense that you're investing in yourself by learning this as well. So that's my brief spiel on are lightning nodes profitable? Uh, to boil it all down with the routing at least, the more capital you have to open up many channels and then the more time you have to determine which of those channels are actually making you money and then closing down channels, opening channels, making channels sort of uh, automatically flow inbound and outbound. The more ability that you have to do that, the more likely you are to make a profit on fees. And also you'll be able to sell channels and make a yield uh, if you uh, so choose. So thanks again. My name is Nate. 
Uh, and uh, this has been Our Light and Know It's Profitable.